The Saints of God, today we are going to see on the title, The Buried Burdens, from the life of Abraham. Turning the Bible to Genesis chapter 12, God gives this promise, a call to Abraham. The Lord had said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whatever curse and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him. God had told Abraham to leave the place and he said he's going to make him a blessing to all the nations. That was a great blessing that God gave. Abraham started the journey from the land of Ur. Later when he came to the place called Canaan, when he was passing by the place and God was talking to him in verse 7, the Lord appeared to Abraham, Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. The second promise of God is that God will give this particular land to his offspring. The first one, he said, he will make Abraham a blessing to all the people on the earth. The second one talks about the offspring. I will to your offspring, I will give this land. This was a promise that God gave. And then as it goes by, Abraham goes to Egypt and Abraham and Lot separate. And then for chapter 14, we saw about Abraham rescuing Lot. And then coming to the last part of chapter 14, Abraham gives a tenth of everything to Melchizedek. And then verse 21, the king of Sodom said to Abraham, give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and have taken an oath that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or a thong of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say I made Abraham rich. Abraham was very particular about who is going to take the credit. He does not want anyone to take the credit for themselves. He wants to give the credit to God. It is God who made him rich. In fact, God had made him rich. Praise God. Now coming to chapter 15, and we find after this, after Abraham have told, expressed his zeal for God, and after this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. And God tells you, Abraham, I am your shield. I am your very great reward. When Abraham hears this promise, I have a wife, I have servants, I have all the riches needful. And, and God is give, also telling me that I will be protected because he is my shield. And God is my very great reward. He was thinking within himself, what is this, all this reward is going to be? How can, how can I match this? Match this with the promise that God have told. That was the burden that was buried within him. That is erupting now. And God, he started to ask the sovereign Lord in verse 2. This question comes to him. He says, but Abraham said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me? Since I remain childless, and the one whom and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus, is slowly bringing, bringing up the burden that is inside of him, because he finds that the equation is not matching. God gave a promise that He will keep him a blessing, you know, that He He will give the land, He will give an inheritance, an offspring, and then the land. No A plus B. According to Abraham, must be producing the Isaac, but to him is only a servant comes. A plus B is equal to, it comes to a servant, yes. But he's questioning, Lord, you were telling that you will give me an offspring, but it is only a servant. 
that was the burden that was inside of him, that was deep buried within him. And God began to speak. You know, he clarifies, Abraham clarifies it, verse 3. And Abraham said, you have given me no children. So a servant in my household will be my heir. Was for then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but the son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up to the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited to it to him as righteousness. Abraham believed the words of the Lord that he said, no, the servant will not be your heir, but an offspring coming out of you will be a heir. And he gave an and proof to it, he made him to see and count the stars. And Abraham believed. One of the burden that was buried that erupted and God clarified it. But now God knew there is an another question that is buried within him. That is about the land of the promise. So God himself initiates this question. Verse 7. He also said to him. He also said to him, God also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. Sometimes we may get a question in that time, who told that and now who is talking? Is it the same person or a different person who gave the promise? And God clarifies, when you were in Ur, the land of Ur, it is I who called you, I who asked you to come out and now it is I who gave in when you pass through Canaan. It is the place, you know, I gave you the promise. God is clarifying it. It is the same person. I have not forgotten the saints of God. There could be certain promises that God have given to you. When you could calculate it, the answer could be just like Abraham arrived. It could be like a servant. Lord, this, this doesn't match, Lord. I don't I get an answer. But God is sovereign. No, he has not forgotten the promise. He has not for years may roll out, but he is still mindful. He is able to fulfill what he has promised. Praise be to the name of the Lord. God will really help you. Amen. God knows what is going on within you. God knows the question. God has an answer. God be with you. God would surely lead you. Have a blessed day, blessed week.